Blockchains and artificial intelligence are two of the most revolutionary technologies of the past millennium. They each hold the potential to completely change the world independent of one another. But what if you could combine the two? What types of new technology could you create that could transform how we use the internet and interact with one another on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, change the future of finance, work, and so much more. Well, in this video, I wanna talk about three different ways that crypto and AI can do just that. I'm gonna break all this down in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can share to do that over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about the intersection of crypto and artificial intelligence technology, because I think the world's gonna look completely different in the next five to 10 years. You know, we're already seeing the beginnings of this, but this has the potential to really snowball and start to get pretty crazy, particularly with, you know, artificial intelligence, crypto, and also augmented reality or virtual reality. But what does this intersection look like? Because blockchains have opened up all these new possibilities. AI has opened up all these new possibilities. But how exactly could they overlap and create new things that we've never even seen before? Well, again, I'm talking about three different ways in this video today, but they all really overlap around one central principle, which is machines and money. All right, so let's go ahead and set the groundwork for that. So basically, the two big AI trends that are happening right now are language models like ChatGPT, where you can go in there and ask it questions and it'll give you all types of information. It can write code for you. It can do all these different types of things. And then the other side of things, artificial intelligence image generation, where you can create prompts and it can start to create stunning visuals where you don't need to have an artist create those for you from scratch. Now, behind the scenes, both of these types of things have extremely expensive computational resources, okay? And we've seen lots of AI business models where they'll open this stuff up for free for other people to try it. Now, long term, that's probably not going to be a completely profitable business model for these people because of the extensive infrastructure costs required to run these artificial intelligence technologies. But there's lots of reasons why they might do it, you know, to get initial users and then sell them something later. Or maybe they're selling you know, some of the learnings that they get to help train the models or for advertising purposes or whatever. But essentially, we're already seeing lots of these popular models and companies offer a free version where you can get on the platform, use it for free. Maybe it's got some limits. But if you want to do something beyond the basics, you're going to have to pay. Whether that's to use plugins with ChatGPT. Yeah, I just put out a video last week talking about how to hunt for crypto airdrops with ChatGPT plugins. Definitely go check that out if you haven't already. Or stuff like artificial intelligence image generation where you want to generate lots of different images or high resolutions or get access to new models that go beyond the basics. Now, right now, the business model for most of these people is to turn this into traditional software as a service model where you just create an account in a very web 2.0 way. You put in your credit card, you pay a monthly fee, and they're generating revenue this way. And that works fine for most of these use cases, but what if we combine this with cryptocurrency, with blockchains, create new business models for AI that go way beyond this traditional end user model? Well, that's where I can see a big overlap and explosion in potential here. And now I'm talking about three different ways in which we can use blockchain and AI to create new models that we've never seen before. And make sure you stick around for way number three, because I think this is going to be the most disruptive by far. All right, so way number one is to actually create decentralized artificial intelligence platforms. Okay, so basically this is creating an entirely new business model that hasn't really permeated the mainstream. So let's look at how most of the artificial intelligence business models work now. So you've got one of two ways. One's a completely closed source API where nobody really knows exactly how the artificial intelligence model works behind the scenes. And you just sign up on their website and you give them their credit card and you pay to use it or use the free version. That's like what ChatGPT is, okay? Or you have another business model, which is essentially like stable diffusion, where essentially they create a completely open source model. You might be able to make some limited requests to it on their website, but you can basically take that software and then host it on your own servers and maybe create your own businesses that either integrate that or just a wrapper around it. And of course, you could charge people money to use it. But the whole business model is to create something open source. Now, what if you did this in a completely decentralized way where we do have open source artificial intelligence models, but the way in which the end user interacts with them is in a decentralized way to where basically we have these open source artificial intelligence models. It runs on an open network. And then in order to have financial incentives to run that and use the artificial intelligence, 
you're basically paying with crypto, okay? So this could be on a per request basis, or perhaps it could be on a batch. And one really easy way to implement this would be something with like oracles, for example. So right now, if you don't know what an oracle is, it's basically a way to get off-chain information onto the blockchain itself. And right now, a lot of popular oracle protocols like Chainlink, you're basically paying per request. So for example, let's say that you wanted to get the current price of Ether on the blockchain or Bitcoin, for example, on the Ethereum blockchain. The blockchain itself doesn't know what the price of Bitcoin is, so you have to ask somebody else what it is. Now, you could have somebody basically just send you a you know a request and you could put in your smart contract or you could use a decentralized Oracle network like Chainlink to get that and then the decentralized set of validators would essentially agree upon what the answer is and deliver that to your smart contract and you would pay every single time you request that information. Now, you could easily snap that in with artificial intelligence where you have a request and the response gets written to Chain and you pay for that every time. And now, of course, this won't make sense for all use cases, but I think we're just scratching the surface of how we can do this, especially if we implement it on layer two technology where the transactions are incredibly cheap. And if we can pull this off, then that's an entirely new business model for how we can host artificial intelligence technologies and pay for requests where it's completely open source and transparent. You see how it works and you can verify the answer on chain and pay for it in a decentralized way with crypto. All right, so way number two that we can use artificial intelligence and crypto together kind of builds off the first one, but it's completely separate. And that's with decentralized training. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, all artificial intelligence has to be trained in some way. And with these big you know, language models like GPT, a lot of people train them by essentially scraping information all over the internet and feeding it into these models. I have a very large data set of information where you can ask it questions and it's going to spit out answers. That's why if you ask it, it says, I don't know anything before like, you know, middle of 2021. It's because that's how far back the archive information goes. Now, you can continue to train these models, create your own data sets so that it becomes more intelligent. Like you could give it an article on the internet and say, hey, summarize an article for me. Or you could get, you know, massive sets of legal documents and have it trained to answer questions on that type of stuff. That's why it becomes so powerful. But what if you could financially incentivize people to give you good and accurate information to train models that can be used to create new services, maybe for this decentralized AI infrastructure that I'm talking about, or even just new closed source business models, doesn't really matter. You can basically crowdsource the training from lots of other people to give it information and you would get some financial reward paid out in crypto for doing that. You know, this is how most other decentralized applications or dApps work where you know, there's some mechanism where you have lots of people who are helping power the usefulness of the application itself. So like Uniswap, for example, if you go to Uniswap and say, I've got Ether and I want to buy USDC, well, where's the USDC coming from that I'm swapping for? It's like a vending machine. I put money in it and some other money comes out. Where's that other money coming from? Well, that's because in the back end, you know, there's smart contracts where you have decentralized liquidity providers who are parking their cryptocurrency in the application for hope of future financial gain by letting the app use their money. So that's like crowdsourcing liquidity for this application. In the same way, you're crowdsourcing knowledge for your AI to train it. And people who contribute to that could be paid out in a decentralized way with tokens. It completely automates the process, provided that we can find a way to essentially filter through and provide the information that you're giving it is actually valuable to where they'll pay you for it. All right, so way number three, and this is the one that I'm really most excited about because I can see how it can completely change how we use AIs in the first place and really unlock the potential of what they can do is basically comp creating completely independent AIs that can you know, talk to other AIs and orchestrate big tasks with much fewer humans involved. So let me explain what I mean by that and how crypto can play a role in that. So right now, like if you're going to use AI, it's kind of like your digital assistant, okay? You can't really just say, hey, here's a big task and you break that down into smaller subsequent tasks and then you go out and execute those tasks. You kind of have to say like step one, here's what I need you to do. It spits back ideas and then you filter out what the next step is and you have to fact check what it's giving you and they have to take that information and turn it into other action items. Maybe you can tell it to do them, but you can't just say like, you know, hey, AI, do this big job for me. And then it breaks down all the tasks and actually delegates to other AIs or other machines and come up with intelligent results. Now, I do think we can get there, but what happens when in order to make a machine, make another machine do a job, there's a financial transaction required, okay? So machines have to talk to other machines to get jobs done and pay another machine based upon the work that they do, then how are we gonna do that? Well, my bet is that we're actually gonna use cryptocurrency and blockchains to make that happen for a couple reasons. Number one, 
it's going to be a lot easier to give a machine money that it's authorized to use. And number two, it's a lot easier to guarantee that transaction went through and that the work that was received for that has a record on the blockchain. It's a way to completely aut automate the accounting for this, especially when you're talking about two different machines that are owned by different people. So there's open and transparency for this, okay? And so that's when you start to see AI potentially becoming a small army that can work for you. And how blockchain fits into this is essentially reducing the friction to where, you know, machines can just pay into the machine, doesn't matter. There's no bottleneck. And we always have a receipt that whatever action was taken was actually delivered on the blockchain. Now, why wouldn't you just use credit cards for something like this? Well, there's a couple different reasons. Number one, you could actually put physical limits on how much they could spend. So what happens if you tell an AI to go do something for you? And then it res runs up like a hundred thousand dollar bill on your credit card. Now you may not have that type of credit limit, but there's lots of big businesses that are going to have major credit lines, and you don't want an AI to just go willy nilly. Now you can issue a bunch of different cards and have small limits, blah 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 blah. But what if you want to just top it off with a certain amount, and you could have those daily limits set to where you know there's no error. It can only spend as much cryptocurrency as you give it. That's completely enforced by the blockchain. And other reasons are, you know, I could see situations where a bank. Is not going to be comfortable with your machine spending money on your behalf or maybe a credit card company. There's all types of red tape on what you can or can't do. You might have fraud detection that's like, hey, you know, we detected fraud here and this transaction didn't go through. This completely removes any centralized limiting factors to making this from happening. You can do it in a completely decentralized, permissionless way with blockchain. All right, so that's an overview of three different ways that we can use cryptocurrency or you know, blockchains with artificial intelligence combined to make new things that the world has really never seen before. Now, I've talked about several AI and crypto use cases on my channel before, but this is the first time that I've talked about this one and broken down in depth. This is all about machines and money, how you can put them together. And I think once these things start to get implemented, the world's going to look very different, especially on a five to 10 year time horizon. So hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to prepare yourself for the brand new world powered by AI and blockchains, then I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappyversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You're letting me expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.